I'm feeling kind of creeped up. So Hello chickadees, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> We've got some creepy things to talk about. <laughs> Let's get into it. So, as you can tell from the title of this video, we're going to be talking about Pet Cemetery. Okay. Now, the specific version of Pet Cemetery that I'm going to be talking about today is the 2019 movie version in theaters right now. You know, that is a very famous book. I know it's a very famous movie back from back in the day but the date here for you my closet door is a little cracked let me go ahead and close that it's creeping me out right now hold up sorry about that i am going to tell you how you could have survived that situation if you are actually in that situation or if you're in a similar situation right now maybe the person that's like wait a minute ghosts aren't real do, 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 do. none of this is real why would i need to know how to protect myself from these things this is for those people that believe in the things that they can't necessarily see these are the people i'm addressing now if you want to just watch this video just because it's interesting go ahead and watch it you don't have to be a ghost lover to watch this video you don't necessarily have to be a ghost it could just be a rude person rude neighbor i don't know but these things are going to help you, and I'm telling you, they're pretty good. All of these things I use. So let's get into the story. Now, I'm just gonna give you the breakdown. We're not gonna get into too specific details of the story because it's the nature of the story that's the most important about how to survive this. Basically, you have a family of four, a mother, a father, a daughter, a son. They move to a new house with a large amount of real estate property with a large amount of property okay they've got a huge expansive backyard essentially that leads into a forest and a little pet cemetery now it's interesting because the family they have a pet cat um the cat's name is church interesting and that is kind of how this catalyst of events occurs through this cat now basically family that moves into a house with a pet cemetery in behind the house and moving into this house they quickly realize that they're being sort of haunted and it's just they're really close to the ether they're really close to the spiritual realm and the other side that they call it okay and it makes things a bit creepy and scary it's beyond the pet cemetery that they get buried and that's where the evil comes forth from the ground and so anything buried in this soil comes back but they're not quite the same <laughs> they come back twisted and wrong and other she has her own kind of history with death has this horrifying memory of her sister being very sick and um, this one incident that led up to her sister's death that she was involved in. And that kind of has haunted her her whole entire life. So when she moves into this house, she starts having visions. She starts seeing things. She starts hearing things that remind her of the situation with her sister way back when she was a little kid. And she starts freaking out. She's like really scared and she's stressed out a lot. And um, it's just the house is haunting her. It's feeding off of her grief and her shame and her um, fear of that incident when she was a little girl. And the father, he's basically a doctor. So he works in trauma and he goes into work one day and he gets this kid that's like, I think he was hit by a car or something, but his total brains are like busted out of his head, okay? He has to save the kid, but the kid dies. And while he's filling out this paperwork, getting ready to put in time of death, I would assume, this kid like suddenly sits up and like starts saying some kind of prophetic things to him, like mess with the energies of the earth. Don't do it. And he doesn't really understand what that means. And it freaks him out, you know, and now he's being haunted by the ghost of this dead kid. Uh, and so they're both kind of being haunted. And then unfortunately, the cat of the family dies. Now, the neighbor Judd, he has lived in this area for a while. He is aware of the pet cemetery. He's aware of the cemetery beyond that. And he's aware of what happens when people are buried there. But 
he still encourages the father to bury the little girl's cat in the earth that will bring it back. And as you could imagine, it comes back, but not quite right. Now, all of these negative things, all of this energy, it's all centered in this area. And they mention it several times throughout the movie that the, the soil is bad, the earth is bad, it's rotten, um, it just don't work, okay? It has an aura about it that leaks into the house, that leaks into the family, that makes them creep, creeps them out and just ruins their lives, essentially, literally. <laughs> Moves freaking scary, you guys. What the fouling of the ground usually means is that it's been tainted. It's no longer pure, it's no longer clean, it's got a negative energy to it, and usually stuff like that occurs when there's been a massive amount of death and blood soaked into the environment. It just I were going to get a home in an area where it had previous disturbing kind of events in the land itself, I might not move there. <laughs> Maybe that's number one. Number one, don't move into a place where uh, it hasn't been consecrated, where you got some crazy stuff going on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I have a few tips for you to help protect yourself from these things, okay? Okay, so let me tell you, one of the first things I would have done had I moved into that house, first of all, uh, the father tried to play like he didn't know that there's a pet cemetery and how big the land was. Why didn't he know that when he bought the place? You didn't like survey the the property a bit before you moved in? Like, hello, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Any new home you're moving into, I don't care if it's brand new, if it got built from the ground up and no one's touched it except for you, the builders, your family, the contractor and the realtor, I don't care. <laughs> You need to cleanse your home when you first move into it. Just like if you were going into a hotel room or an apartment, you want them to clean out the toilets and the bathtub. You want those things to already be clean before you get in there. It's the same concept with just about anything, okay? Especially if I knew that there's a cemetery nearby before I can move into this home to make sure it's safe for me, both physically and spiritually. So first one, cleanse your space. You can bring any kind of symbol that represents um, sanctity or something of a higher power or something that you believe in that represents protection to you like a cross or anything you just got to find what works for you it's salt you guys it is salt consecrate the earth with salt okay so yeah, you can use salt to consecrate the earth. It's beautiful. This here is black Himalayan salt. Very beautiful. As you can see, um, black is a lot of people think black is a scary thing, a scary color, but um, technically black is a shade. <laughs> but black is actually a beautiful shade and it absorbs negative energy. So just as it absorbs all light, Raise it. Let's think back to physics, elementary physics or high school physics. Um, black absorbs, right? It absorbs light. It's going to absorb negative energies as well, okay? Black is very powerful. Because it absorbs um, light energy, you could say that it purifies negative energies via the light that it absorbs so easily given its shape. I've salted the rooms a little bit and the the any kind of portal into from the outside of the property to the inside of the property so maybe the window frames a little bit of salt the door frames I would have done um, that's getting a bit intricate but if I knew that the environment has been known for hauntings or known for negative energies I would have taken that extra mile and done that pretty simple pretty easy most people have access to it it doesn't have to be black salt it could be pink salt it could be red salt just salt in general black is just something I like to use because it is good for protection and those kinds of things so let it sit for a few hours and then vacuum it up and you're totally fine and it just it absorbs all of those negative energies and it cleanses the environment in a safe, healthy way. I talk about this in my salt video, so I'm not gonna get into it because you should have gone and watched my salt video, okay? Thank you very much. And the minute I saw a ghost in my home, I, where is my salt? Another thing you can do to clean, cleanse your environment that works really, really well is... Whoa! 
okay, I'm sage. Um, this is white sage, actually. So I would suggest growing your own white sage. It'll save the environment and the sage that's growing right now, and it'll also be closer to home, and you it'll save you money in the long run. You're saging, and while you're saging, you're quietly meditating, or maybe you're saying a prayer in your head, or maybe you're asking for protection from whatever being you want to ask. Or you could even just be saying, I will not allow negativity here. If I have one bad nightmare, you guys, I'm saging the entire house the next morning. I'm not even kidding you. I'll tell you what, it works every time. Woo! Obsidian is a powerful protection crystal. Very, very powerful. Put a bowl of this near your doorway. It'll keep out negative energies, negative people, negative entities. Keep on going, ghost man. We ain't got time for it here. No soliciting. ET is like a a home alarm system. You ask and they'll give you stickers when you pay for the subscription. They'll give you a sticker and they'll also give you a sign that you can stick in the ground and in the front of your home. And the sign doesn't physically necessarily protect you, but the symbolism of the sign allows, it tells people walking by, this home is protected by ADT security system. Don't try us. And that's the same thing, the salt and the obsidian and the sage and the other ingredient that I'm gonna tell you are doing. They're gonna tell the, the negative energies, don't try it, okay? This place is protected, try the next house, you know? You're not gonna get very far, and, and it's just a deterrent, you know? Okay, let me show you, hold on. Oh, oh, I was so close, hold on. Nom, 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 nom. You missed it, I was out of frame. Um, I got it. Did you see what it was? Blueberries! Yay! They're really good. These are juicy ones. Mm. I love blueberries. Let's go ahead and have one more. Mm. Um, um, yum. Okay. So, the little blueberry. I'm going to show this really close and see if you can see what symbol you see. Can you see? What shape does that blueberry make on the inside of it? Where the, um, the stem used to be? Can you see that? It's a five-pointed star. Are highly respected in Native American culture, some Native American cultures, and believe that they were a gift from the heavens the gods because of the five-pointed star symbol that is naturally created in the center of the blueberry where the little leaves are, the little stem opens up there. The star is said to represent the five elementals, right? Fire, water, earth, air, and spirit. And those five elements <clears throat> protect us from negative energies, right? So a pentagram is not really meant to be what everybody think it is. I think it's like some kind of evil shit. It's really not evil. I need to stop eating these. Um, um, um. They're so good though. Blueberries are really good. They have, they're high in antioxidants. They're high in good energy. They have the little protection star naturally built into the framework of their being. They are made to protect us. The consuming blueberries, it is not only good for your body, but it's also good spiritually as well. They're a great protective fruit. It'll keep out negative energies and flush out anything negative in your system as well. So blueberries are the goat in this situation, okay? People underestimate the little blueberry thing because it's a little blue. It, is, it can't really do what it do, but it does. Blueberries are great for protection. Eat them, make a blueberry pie, let the smell waft into your home, and does it not remind you of something happy and cheery and warm? And just, don't you feel like family vibes when you smell blueberry pie? Get the smoke out of here. Crush them up and use them. And you can drop a few blueberries at the base of your um, doorway and that'll keep out negative energies. You could put them around the perimeter of your home and you can imagine the light of this energy coming from inside of you 
and the blueberries marking the boundary of this protection. That's it, you guys. That's Those were all of my tips on how to survive the pet cemetery. <laughs> <clears throat> horror show, horror, horror. I hope you enjoy. I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you start eating more blueberries, but not to extinction, okay? Take it easy. Uh, Pet Cemetery is a great movie. I hope you guys stay safe and happy. And I hope the scary things don't get too.